All right, we're back. And in this video, we're going to cover the actor system, correct? Yeah, actors and game rules. Game rules, I almost forgot. Yep. So uh, the actor itself is usually a player. Correct yep. me if I'm wrong. Game rules, it's pretty much the framework of how the player interacts in the world. In a way, yes. What game rules are responsible for by default is simply creating actors. So the game rules get events. For example, when a new client connects to the server, the game rules is notified and can then choose to create an actor. Mm -hmm. And then the game rules also connect notified when that client is ready for gameplay and then eventually notified when the client disconnects. This is always done. Even if you are on a local sandbox instance with no multiplayer, then on client connect will be called. Okay. Yeah. So I think in, the, in a way to sum it up, it'd be like free for all, mm -hmm. deathmatch or team deathmatch. That would be something that game rules would house. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So I guess we can get into it and see where it takes us. Yeah. So what we're going to do is we're going to open the game plugin and start stripping it down. Since the blank template still ships with game rules and a player, we'll actually nuke that initially. And that way we can do this by ourselves and go through the flow of what game rules and players involve. We'll step back here and simply remove the game rules and remove everything but iSimpleActor. iSimpleActor is simply an implementation of iActor with all the pure virtuals implemented by default. This saves us some effort since there are quite a few implemented. If we just have a look at that quickly, all these things are things we would have to do by ourselves. But Ooh. this file does it for us. So that's a nice help with that. Not bad. And yeah. I thought game object extension was long. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then we open the CMake list file and actually remove the game rules from here. We remove the player, player input, uh, player view, and then also remove the from the list right here. There we go. Now we only have the entity helpers and the plugin itself. If we compile this now, it should be done in a second. Yeah, there we go. And there we go. No game rules and no player. Awesome. Yeah. So if you're following along, or I hope you're following along, that's what you do to get to this true starting point. Mm -hmm. So what do we do next? What we do next is we recreate this. <laughs> <laughs> so everything we removed, we're going to redo. <laughs> so we're just going to paste it, correct? Yeah, copy, paste. Okay. <laughs> no, we're going to actually create it from scratch. So we can create a new game rules folder. And we can call create a new source file called mygamerules.cpp. Okay. Again, we're skipping the header file since we won't be including this anywhere else. And then go a step back and add it to CMake lists. All this source group game rules. Once again here. Let's give it a friendly name of game rules as well. And then the only actual file inside it is game rules slash my game rules. Final thing we want to do is assign this to source down here. That way this should be compiled. And then we open Visual Studio again. Or we close that actually. Let's reopen it then. No, there we go. Okay, it's fine. <laughs> uh, then all we need to do is go into game rules and add the standard header. And compile. So now our game rules file appears right here and is compiled. Then what we need to do is implement iGame rules. This is fairly straightforward, but let's just go through the flow and see what happens. So C game rules implements iGame rules. Let's see here. That should be in my game rule system. And simply implementing it just like that. Consider that this is a game object extension. So this is part of the legacy systems that have been replaced with entity components. However, some things like game rules and actors have not yet been moved to the newer systems. Expect this to change for 5.4 and onward. What we need to do now is implement all the pure virtual functions for game rules. This might take a bit, but we'll try and do it fairly quickly and then speed it up in the final video.
Okay guys, finally done. So what this does is implement all the pure virtual functions in iGame rules interface and then allows us to handle the three calls that actually matter, being the on-client connect call, the on-client disconnect call, and on-client enter the game. As mentioned before, on-client connect will be sent when we receive a request from a client to join the server, and an on-client enter the game is what will be called when the player is actually ready for gameplay. And what we'll do in these functions is simply for connect, create the actor, Disconnect, remove the actor from any stored systems, and then enter the game, process any game logic to, for example, spawn the actor. That's pretty much it. Yeah. That wraps up the game rules? Really? Nope. No. That's pretty much it for actually creating the minimal game rules with no logic.